Welcome back to Cuban Curls. My name is Marta and today I have such an amazing video plan for you. This is a collab with one, the only, Hot Humble Pie. Her name is Holly and she's a relatively new YouTuber. I just want everybody to see her, know her. She's amazing. If you haven't seen her watering can video, I don't know what you're waiting for. Also, she makes beads out of flour. It's ridiculous. This girl is on fire. She's gonna be a big hit. I know I could feel it in my bones. Holly left a comment on one of my videos. She was motivated to start her channel after she saw a video of mine where I was talking about my autoimmune disease and my chronic pain. And she felt that here I was with all these chronic illnesses and I'm doing it, so she was gonna do it. And that is what it's all about. I asked Holly if she would do a collab with me, and she said yes. So I am super excited. Today we're gonna bring you some trash to treasures, Dollar Tree DIYs, beautiful decor for your home on a budget that is like really, really nice. Now I just have to say one thing. My nails in this video look horrifical. Is that even a word? Uh, I didn't have any nail polish remover. I mean, you know what's going on, right? We can't go out. But Peter Parker, my husband, you know, Rick from The Walking Dead, he's my Rick. He went out and he searched all over the valley for nail polish remover. He's the best husband in the whole wide world, but he didn't do it in time for the video. So I am very sorry. While he was at it, he should have bought me some hair color. Jesus Christ, look at this. Uh, it is what it is. Let's get started because we have a lot to do. First DIY, I'm gonna use this rug underlay. It's from the Dollar Tree. I got it a while ago and I didn't know what I was gonna do with it. I never use things from the Dollar Tree for their intended purposes, but we all know how that goes. I wanted to make one of those woven wall hangings that are very popular right now, but I think you need a loom and I don't have one of those. So I came up with this idea instead. I'm gonna be using yarn that I had in my stash, some macrame cord leftovers. All of these are very thin. And since the holes on the underlay were so big, I knew it wasn't gonna work. So what I did is I quintupled this. It's a fancy way of saying that I took five strands of yarn and bunched them together. Having a needle would have made this so much easier for me, but I don't own one. So like my mama says, Oye niña, a falta de pan casabe. That's an old Cuban saying for, if you don't have a needle, you make one lady. And for the Spanish lesson, Masking tape on the end, twist it into a point. So I'm gonna start this off with macrame cord because I wanted something really strong to hold this together. Creating a border of sorts. Now, if you don't have macrame cord, I guess you could use twine or maybe even just use the yarn. I just knew I wanted something stronger than yarn. When you begin to weave, just make sure you make a knot in the back. Even though I quintupled, I love that word, the holes on this underlay are still kind of big. Making a knot just prevents the yarn from becoming undone, much like when you sew or embroider. I honestly just winged this. I had no set pattern, didn't know what I was gonna do. I knew that I wanted this primarily white with some pops of color, and that I wanted the yarn to look puffy, if that makes any sense. I found that the more holes I skipped, the puffier the yarn looked. And that's the look that I was going for. Now when I come to the end of a strand, I just pull it through one of the holes, pull it all the way to the back, make a knot in the back, and I just leave it there. I don't cut it until the very end. Grab another piece of yarn and then just start where I left off. So like I said, I wanted to give this a pop of color, so I went in with some gold and some gray right in the middle, and then I just go to town, weaving all kinds of shapes and lines and like I said, I didn't know where I was going with this. And this is a little time consuming. We're in the middle of a pandemic. What else is there to do? There is always Netflix. 72 hours later, I cut away all of the extra underlay. I'm gonna glue this to a frame. If you've been following me, do you guys remember this frame from one of my last videos? I wasn't happy with it at all. I was happy with those little glue dots that I made with my glue gun. I mean, I think that was a great idea. I'm gonna give myself a thumbs up for that one. You don't have to buy thumbtacks, beads, just use your glue gun. Saves you a couple of bucks. I hot glued this to this frame because I had the frame and I wanted to use it, but you could hang this from a dowel by using some cord, yarn, whatever you have on hand, and I think that would work really nicely. I believe in the feeling It's 
like something I can't explain. I really hate letting things go to waste, so I took a piece of the underlay that I had left over and a wreath from the Dollar Tree, one of the styrofoam wreaths, and I decided to make a plant stand. I start off by giving the wreath one coat of my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white. I was surprised that I only had to give it one coat. Now, besides the fact that Rust-Oleum happens to be the best chalk paint that I have ever tried, this Sephora makeup brush might have had something to do with it. Now, I'm sure Miss Sephora isn't going to be happy to hear that I used her makeup brush for painting, whoever she is. But this worked better than any paintbrush I own. I'm sorry, Michelle, I took your brush. Now I'm going to be doing one of my favorite things to do and something that I've been doing on my channel since I started. Making things that are not wood look like wood using white paint and some antique wax. Last year I made a video showing you how I took my brown veneered particle board shelves from Ikea and completely transformed them making them look like real wood by using this technique. Very deceiving to the eye. Would you guess that my farmhouse window is made from styrofoam and plastic? Or this adorable little stand, which is made from a Dollar Tree plastic cutting board, and those little legs, plastic ice cream cones, also from the Dollar Tree. I'll leave those videos down below in the description box in case you want to check them out. So when I wax, I usually start out very light and then gradually work my way up in color. If you start off very dark right off the bat, then, you know, you can't go backwards. So start light until you get to the color that you really want. Now we're going to take the back of a Dollar Tree mirror. I don't throw anything out, luckily, and I use the mirror for another project in my Boho series. I'm actually going to use it as the base for my plant stand. But first I'm going to use it as a guide. I need to draw a circle and this fits perfectly in the wreath form. And using some more yarn and macrame cord, I'm going to go ahead and make another design, this time going around in a circle. Once I'm done, I take the back of the mirror, glue it on to the weaving. Then I just glue the entire thing onto my wreath form and cut away the hangover. I decided to cut another piece of cardboard and then cover it with a piece of scrap muslin material that I had in my stash. Now you're going to see me using a glue stick quite a bit whenever I want to glue material onto something. Mod Podge and I just don't get along. I do use hot glue in the back. Nobody's going to see that. In essence, I did this for two reasons. One, to give the bottom of the tray more stability and two, to cover up that hot mess that was underneath. I see you so I glue it to the bottom, slap some beads on there that I had left over from a garland, and then I just put some macrame cord around the edge because I guess my measurements were wrong. You know me in math. But there was like a little gap, so I used the macrame cord to fill the gap. I love how this tray came out. I really do. It looks like a little bagel, makes me hungry, but I'm using it as a plant stand, but you could really use this for anything. You could throw your keys on there. You could put a candle even. Just be very careful because this whole thing can be like poof, fire. It is styrofoam. I'm very happy with the way that this turned out, but what I love even more is that if you want to incorporate more wood tones in your home, using this technique, you can transform practically anything and make it look like wood. I'm totally obsessed with my little bagel plant stand. For my final DIY, and, and my absolute favorite, to be honest, I grabbed inspiration from Urban Outfitters. Now, I saw this rattan planter, and I didn't fall in love with it because it was a planter. I really just love the caning on the side. I love that look. Then I was over on Amazon and I saw this little box and I just, I fell in love with it. I don't know, there was just something about it. So I figured, why not combine the two? If these two decor pieces had a baby, it would be my next DIY. Now I didn't have any caning. I don't have a lot of things in case you haven't noticed, but I do have a vivid imagination. I had this Dollar Tree placemat laying around and I figured if I could tweak it, I could make it look like caning. Two coats of my white chalk paint, 
And once dry, I go in with my Rust-Oleum American Walnut Stain. A honey colored stain would have been closer to what I wanted to accomplish, but this is what I had on hand. Now, if you don't like using stain, you could try paint. That might work. Sometimes I'm like a mad scientist. I love mixing paint with stain and wax just to see what I can come up with. And that's how I came up with this idea. Now, I am a little bit of a hoarder and I do keep boxes. I hear Nicole from the Weeks Nest say that all the time, but really and truly, if you have a good box, keep it. You never know what you can create. So I start off by cutting the lid off with my X-Acto knife and then I measured the pieces or the area around the sides of the box and I'm gonna glue all of the cardboard that I cut out around the box. This way I don't have to paint it. And I'm using the entire box so there's no waste. When my sponge brushes have seen their last days, not this one, this is a new one, but what I do is I save the little wooden sticks and it's a good thing because I didn't have any dowels. So I just used four of these. I had them laying around. If they have wording on them, you just sand them off and the words come right off. So I'm gonna cut them to size and I'm gonna use them as legs. I stain them with the wood stain. And then I also stained a tree branch that I found outside. We're gonna use that later. Now my placemat is dry and I'm just going to cut all the pieces and I'm going to glue them on all four sides of the box. And I had enough left over to do some patchwork on the bottom. I severely burnt myself with the glue gun. It was a horror fest. But the show must go on. I take some macrame cord, which I stained. I'm just loving my macrame cord. And I'm going to hot glue it around the top edges. It didn't look finished, but that did the trick. I wanted to line the inside of the box, but I didn't want to do it by just throwing material in there. You know what I mean? So what I did was just wrap some cardboard that I cut out to the size of the inside of the box. I've said the box a million times and kind of wrapped it up like a present with that same muslin fabric I used before. Cut off any of the excess fabric and then glued all those pieces to the box. Then I hot glue my little sticks to each corner, which happened to fit perfectly. And finally, for my handles, I'm gonna use the tree branch that I sawed in half, a few pieces of macrame cord, which I pulled apart and ended up looking tie-dyed since I had stained it. A tiny bit of hot glue to secure the cord. Hot glue both of these to either side of, you guessed it, the box, and we're done. I'm in love. This took a little extra time to give it some detail, but it was definitely well worth it. I personally think lining the inside the way that I did brings it up a notch. It makes it look high-end and store-bought. I really doubt anybody would know that this started out as a microphone box. You can use it in your bathroom to put like your soap and some little hand towels remote controls, tissue box, so many different ways that you can use this. A true trash to treasure that practically costs next to nothing to make. Today my final thoughts are those of gratitude. I honestly have so many things to be grateful for. One of those things is meeting my new friend, Holly. I am not only grateful, but humbled that I was able to inspire her to start her own YouTube channel simply by sharing my ability to adapt to living life with a chronic illness and not allowing it to dictate what I can and cannot do. If you take a look at the About section on my channel, from the very beginning, my goal on this channel has been to inspire you. No matter how old you are or what challenges you're facing, you can do this. Start where you are, do what you can, and use what you have. I consider myself so blessed to be able to use this platform to share my ideas, my shortcomings, my life in general. To know that I was able to change someone's thinking about what they can and cannot do confirms that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do and I'm where I'm supposed to be. I've said this before and I'll say it again. If I can make a difference in one person's life, 
then that is enough success for me. Please don't forget to stop by my girl Holly's channel, watch her video for the collab, leave her some love, and tell her I sent you. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up. And if you like this video and you've yet to subscribe, please consider subscribing for more inspiration. Thank you so much for stopping by today. You mean the world to me, and I will see you in the next one. Smile for me.